Hi, I'm Paul Heaney, Editorial Director for Design World. We're here at NI Week, it's day two, and once again I'm joined by Barb Schmitz, our senior editor, Miles Budimir, also our senior editor, and by uh, Steve Meyer, who is our contributing editor. Day two, uh, we had a lot of interesting application stories that came through at the keynote. Um, it seemed like all of them were about um, cutting down test times, uh, cutting down the design cycles, and, and how the NI products were helping uh, different people achieve that. Uh, a lot of these interesting applications included the Airbus's factory of the future that they've been working on, uh, featuring smart tools and wearable devices. I think wearable devices will be uh, something we'll be seeing and reading a lot more about in the, in the near future. Uh, Clemson University had uh, talked about their 15 megawatt uh, dyna dyna dynamometer, <laughs> easier for me to say, <laughs> which uh, which Steve has written about for us already, uh, so I'm sure he might touch on that. Uh, we heard about the gorilla rainstorms in Japan, kind of an interesting phenomenon, and how the uh, Furino Electric Company has developed a compact embedded weather radar um, that is a fraction of the weight and size of the old weather radar. So a lot of interesting things going around. Let's pass the mic down, and, and Barb, tell us what you found interesting today. All right, sure. Uh, I attended a session today with a German company called uh, Aquifor, um, and the, uh, the, their head of research was talking um, about the complexities of pharmaceutical drug research. As we all know, um, it costs, some of the stats were, were staggering, four to $11 billion per drug, um, new drug in development. Um, so obviously there's a lot of efforts to um, compress the testing of all these new drugs. Um, I, another interesting stat he threw out was that 50% of drugs that are eventually approved were actually um, tested for other purposes and they were off-label indications for uh, their ultimate um, use. So that was really interesting. But, uh, you know, it's this whole concept of big data. They have robotic uh, instruments and uh, telescopes um, that they now use to do the experiment so it's more automated, they can test hundreds of samples at the same time, so obviously a lot of the technology that National Instruments brings to the board is going to benefit the scientific community. So, you know, it was, it, was, it was very interesting. Obviously cancer research is what they're primarily uh, focused on, but, uh, it, you know, it was interesting to see how the technology plays into the scientific world since we cover m mainly design, so it's interesting. Okay, thanks, Barb. Um, <coughs> so I brought a little uh, visual prop here with me. Um, <coughs> one of the things that uh, was touched upon in uh, this morning's keynote was the introduction of the latest Compact Rio um, uh, product here. This is the 10th tenth, tenth year anniversary, so it was first um, introduced in 2004. Quite, uh, it's kind of kind of hard to believe, actually, but. Um, this <coughs> this new um, compact real system is uh, contains a uh, Intel Atom processor, uh, a Xilinx um, FPGA, and it has the uh, or it uses the Linux uh, real time um, um, operating system, which is open open architecture. At the keynote this morning, uh, there was a really interesting demo which highlighted uh, synchronized motion and what it can do. High speed synchronized motion, really, really interesting, really cool. Uh, and some of the people that I spoke to here uh, are really looking forward to what uh, NI's customers will be able to do with this new new system. So, uh, and uh, Steve, I think I'll pass it to you. Thanks, Miles. Um, in addition to the new Compact Rio platform and uh, the new Intel versions of the platform, uh, they debuted for the first time a complete system on module, which essentially takes all of the computing power of the standard Rio product and puts it in a format that's embeddable. Um, some really aggressive product campaigns are being wrapped around this, applications uh, all over the world where customers need very small lightweight uh, products that they can embed the intelligence in and get a little bit more uh, sophisticated usage on the plant floor. Uh, in addition to following the comment earlier, uh, Clemson's dyno, the 15 megawatt dyno in uh, South Carolina is now the largest test facility for wind power in the world. There's, frankly, there's nothing close. The largest, uh, the largest test system that DOE operates is at five five megawatts up in uh, Colorado. And so with bigger equipment coming out in the wind industry, the, the newer test facility is uh, really crucial to forward testing and uh, verifying hardware for the wind, wind power folks. 
Thanks everyone and thank you for watching and remember you can always see more of our videos on our website at www.designworldonline.com. Click on videos. Have a great day.